Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, live here from the studio. Make sure you hit that like, share, uh, comment button on this uh, on this Wednesday. Like live from where? <laughs> I felt like we were going to be somewhere else. Well, on this Wednesday, live here from we are talking are. to Cortez Hankton live in studio, and we're also going to talk to writer and director John Perkins, who is launching a movie down here in South Louisiana. Uh, got some big money behind it as there's a big agency um, out uh, out of Los Angeles that I believe that is behind this. Uh, but he's going to stop in and talk about the movie The Mascot, uh, which will feature uh, a story about LSU's Mike the Tiger. He'll be in here at 8.30 this morning telling us about the project. At 7.30 this morning, we will wrap up our assistant coach cycle here from LSU football as Cortez Hankton, the wide receivers coach, is going to make his way through studio here at uh, 7.30 this morning, and uh, that will be a full, in-depth look at uh, all of Brian Kelly's assistants uh, here going into year one uh, of Coach Kelly here in Baton Rouge, and it's been really cool to uh, talk to these guys and start to form a little bit of a relationship with them here uh, now that they're down here in South Louisiana and uh, and leading LSU, and Cortez Hankton comes home back down here as he is from New Orleans, a standout at St. Augustine High School. Of course, him and Frank Wilson, both from St. Aug, both from New Orleans. Talk about a, uh, a hell of a one-two punch uh, in the uh, in the city uh, as far as recruiting goes. Uh, and we'll talk to him about that. And also, uh, what it's like to coach this room. Uh, you know, we had Jamar Kane come through here a couple of times here in the offseason. And of course, Kane's group is so talented, so deep. Uh, you kind of feel the same about Hankton's group at wide receiver. Uh, obviously, they might have the best player at that position uh, in the country, if healthy, in Kayshawn Booty. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, the names behind him, uh, like Jack Besh and Brian Thomas and Jare Jenkins uh, and all types of guys that are expected uh, to be playmakers at that spot. So looking forward to talking to Coach Hankton here. It's also mailbag day. Uh, you got a chance to get your mailbags in. Hashtag uh, mailbag. Uh, if you want to uh, get your questions in inside of the chat, you can always call in uh, with voicemails at 225-229-7741. Rove Camara, 225-229-7741. <laughs> got a full house here this morning as uh, Coach Hankton has woke everybody up. <laughs> well, time. Studio. That's right. We're here. Well, the Carpool Queen is seven, here. I think. Katie is here. We've got uh, yeah. Lloyd and Noah. Of course, they're here. Noah with a new T-shirt. New mm-hmm. uh, T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> Fresh white tea. Jealous. Uh, Stewie is here, and of course, Bree is here. We'll have some uh, social media coming up for you here at uh, uh, throughout the day of Coach Hankton's visit and John Perkins' visit. I was over at the, uh, I guess it was a little bit of a, a launch party, I guess, or, or kind of like a get-together for the mascot last night on the side porch over at, uh, at Walk-On's. Uh, a lot of people kind of shuffling through there as we were able to meet with, uh, with John Perkins and um, a couple of the um, the suits, I guess, behind this film. Uh, and it looks like this is going to be like a big budget movie that's coming down to Louisiana. He'll explain the storyline. It's about uh, like a, a, a quarterback at the high school level who's got a scholarship, uh, loses the state championship game, um, and ends up in college and becomes the, the school mascot and kind of spins it into a success story. But uh, Perkins or does be he? Here. It yes. said the football player ends up just being the mascot. Uh, yeah, like, like the, the high school, school football player. standout football player. But why doesn't he go into play football in college? Because he's not good enough, Katie. But if he's going to watch the movie. in high school, you're going to have to watch the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's an, that's yeah, a he loses story. his scholarship. Uh, oh. Boozing up. What did he do? Uh, do you know you that? You watch the movie no, I don't. to you don't find know. out. <laughs> you're you're I mean, like, they, ah? they, they explained it like, um, but it's like something in the game okay. that he does to lose his scholarship. Oh, man. Uh, oh. So I don't know if he gets hurt or if I don't know if he like, yeah. you know, uh, does something stupid. Disobeys <laughs> I mean, the coach. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. um, but it seems like it's going to be a pretty cool yeah. Um, moving, it'll be based down here in uh, in Baton Rouge and around LSU, and they'll actually like be filming during LSU games this upcoming fall. They've got the clearance. Mm. Uh, I think the, the the original script was written for the University of Georgia, uh, and Georgia just uh, like after a couple of months of meetings uh, in Athens, they just couldn't they couldn't come to an agreement. They couldn't get the deal done. Um, and, you know, through some contacts and through some relationships, they were able to set up some meetings uh, at LSU. And LSU is like, handed over 
like the big piece that I got from this, Patrick Mulhern, who used to run Celtic Studios, who's now in charge of like the tax commissions in the film industry in Louisiana. Uh, he works for the state government, uh, was there last night. And he was talking about like, he really didn't, like the, the moment that this project became serious for him is when LSU signed over their mm. rights to their, their brand, like in perpetuity, like, like forever, which like never happens. Like that was the part that Georgia was hung up on. Like Georgia was a little uneasy on giving them the rights to the logo, the brand, the university forever. Because, yeah, the movie, I would yeah. imagine it's going to go to, at some point you'll be able to rent it or it's going to sure, be well, like I mean, live on like forever. Digital. So you'll yeah. still have to, instead of having to re-up the contract every time, it's yeah. like you can still show this movie on TV or what have yeah. you. That makes sense. LSU um, is good about that, though. LSU is very good about it. it. Um, Coach? I want to be in it. Oh. oh. Put oh. me in it. Uh, we should have Mike make your Boy. play here coming up at eight thirty. Can we have Mike the Tiger on um, for an interview? I don't know if Mike the Tiger he can just fit growl. In the video, yeah, can't reveal the, the identity. <laughs> I had well, no, I, I, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Not the body, just the head. Just the head. Six foot ten. Just the head. Just so the so you, just see how just see. the mask. The head. <laughs> so I would <laughs> imagine people know who he is. Then <laughs> somebody has to. Yeah, like, there's not many they six foot ten. Cats run Coach, around I'm campus. You, Plus, his roommate would know, yeah. right? He can't hide Lord, from He's not Spider-Man. You'd be surprised how many <laughs> tall people they have on campus. I mean, I've been on campus. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. They're not I mean, they, had a, they had a tuba player playing center for the basketball team. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's how few and far between they were. Darcy. In the last decade. Uh, what was it? That wasn't Darcy. Was not it not Darcy Malone? No, yeah, Del Piero. Andrew. The tuba player. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be cool to hear from uh, from John Perkins coming up here at uh, at eight thirty this morning talking about how uh, they got here. I didn't know like LSU has somebody on staff, like within their like athletic department that just deals with like film inquiries. Like if you want to shoot a film oh, based really? around LSU, well I guess they have like, to. They have somebody on staff. Like on salary with an office, like sitting there ready God. to take. How like, much does that happen? I don't know. Man. Obviously, a lot. How much does they pay this person? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know LSU's I don't very know, but protective I mean, like, of their rights. We can so talk I to guess. Perkins about it, but he was like, LSU was just they were so prepared for this conversation. Yeah, I bet. He was like, I mean, like the you know our our first stops were I mean we were doing a lot of pitching. Yeah. A lot of like this is what we would need. Yeah. You know this is how this would work. Um, and they said when they got to LSU, they were like, they instantly saw it. Yeah. You know, they were like, we want it. Like, get this deal done. And That's it, it moved pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You know, like it moved, uh, it moved pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk to Perkins coming up here at, uh, at 830 this morning. Cortez Hankton will be here uh, at 730 this morning. Um, NFL, New Orleans Saints start mm -hmm. training camp today. Ronnie Riggs in the building right now Come picking on. up his equipment. My man is heading down to uh, to Metairie today. Going to watch the uh, the opening day of training camp. Representing us in his Jordy Kalata show t-shirt. That's exactly right. Uh, Ron, no cell phones <laughs> being used inside of the uh, the practice facility. Don't get us in any trouble. Ron, that's Especially the way you couldn't one. give Ron a worse so, rule. <laughs> no, so, so last night, Ron showed me what Nick Underhill sent all of his people for Saints camp. And it was like... Don't pretty much at the yeah, end right. of it, he was like, pretty much, right. don't fuck up. Right. Yeah. Like, if you yeah. fuck up, you yeah. will. Yeah. I feel like Jordy yeah. has said that Literally. to Ron at least 50 so times have. since Monday. Ron knows. Yeah, right. I trust Ron. Say, he but has me, to know. Me and Ron went through the, 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 yeah, the protocol. Yeah. Yeah. The protocol is right. like, Ron, look, right. you got to get Yeah, there's no ash on that protocol. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 look. Ron had a few cigars. Yeah. Put something in there. Yeah. Um, We're just talking. But we will have a presence down at Saints training camp every day. So looking forward to getting that information back to you um and i mean it's football season uh nothing kicked off football season better uh than the picture of jarvis landry oh, yesterday yeah, i cool. thought that was two lsu homes i did too i did too, too for a while, while. That was it too. took me a while and i still liked it yeah. <laughs> and then it went well I, if you, it, it took you back to when he was in high school you knew instantly what he was going to look like in an lsu uniform because i mean he started uh, yeah. as a freshman at lutcher and i mean Lutcher obviously Open has just, goals. I mean, like, I mean, it's just Copy L my whole LHS on the side is the only difference <laughs> in LSU's gear. I mean, um, and to see that picture where, I don't know if you saw it, Stu, let's see if we can pull it up. You can go to uh, Jarvis's Twitter account. 
if if anybody has not seen it that lives here in South Louisiana or is a a fan of LSU football, you must live under a rock. But <laughs> yesterday, Jarvis Landry was taking his individual pictures uh, in his Saints right. uniform, uh, head to toe, geared up, strapped up with the helmet and the visor on. Uh, he was flexing the biceps on each side, and he was holding his LSU helmet and his Lutcher helmet, uh, which was just a really cool picture. You know, I mean, having a chance to talk to Frank Wilson here a couple of weeks ago, it really does bring perspective to just, I mean, if you are a, a, a football junkie and re- covering recruiting, you can go back to that time where Jarvis, Odell, Jeremy Hill, Lyell Collins, I mean, even the class that was coming after those guys like Tyron Matthew and Eric Reed, and all those guys were coming up. It was such a, um, you know, at least for kind of where I was in life, it was, it was such a fun time to cover recruiting. You know, I mean, we had just really kind of gotten into calling high school football on the radio, so we were really following these guys around. I mean, we were really going to call their games wherever they were playing. We were trying to get the game and trying to set up and following, you know, their high school career and into their college career and now having a chance to watch both Jarvis and Tyron play back in New Orleans as a Saint with still football left in the tank. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that there is a little there, – there, there's a ton of sentimental value to having these two guys back and playing in their – and this has happened before, right? I mean, like you can even go back to way even back to when the Saints uh, first – launched back in 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 the 60s in the early 60s they went and got um you know jim taylor from green bay when jim taylor was really he was really washed up you know what i mean like he was his 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 better football was long long in the rear view mirror run past daylight <laughs> yes but i mean they went and got him to bring him in to sell some tickets to get some interest of a local name that people could relate to um you know to kind of really move the meter um, you know, in this instance, it definitely piques the interest and creates a ton of intrigue for the Saints. But the coolest part about it is, is that they still got life left in their football career. You know what I mean? Like, they still got plays left to be made in the tank. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's really going to be uh, awesome. You know, I mean, especially, you know, for, for a lot of us who, you know, sit in the same situation where we've been watching LSU football for you know, the past 15, 20, 25 years. And, you know, throughout that, you kind of start that, 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 that viewing when a lot of these, these big time players are in high school and, you know, there was no bigger name in high school football over that time span, you know, over that time span, the Jarvis Landry. I mean, Mm. look at that. I I really did think it was LSU. That is, that is, that is, that is hard porn. That is (laughs) hardcore porn, bro. Like, I mean, that is just like, raunchy stuff man what's I mean, the mascot of it's a tiger it is still um, a tiger it's a bulldog. bulldog okay yeah they're bulldogs okay um shut up <laughs> i would have believed that i know jerk. um <laughs> they've been it's, it's unfortunate so that tired got called away for personal reasons because you know they would have had both of them and like doing the same thing oh, yeah. and that, that would have been, been an all-timer to have well it just makes whenever his launches right yeah. that much better and yeah. i guess he would have revealed the jersey number because we still don't know yet right? yeah well i guess it's not going to be five because uh, uh, which that was like kind of the big play, but if you've uh, if you were paying attention, Andy Dalton and Mark Ingram switched jersey numbers. Mark Ingram looked like wa- like crazy in fourteen. I yeah, thought it he looked, looked very yeah, awkward. Yeah, he looked like. Um, but now that he's changed his number to five, which I both thought, uh, which I thought that uh, Tyron Matthew was kind of like he was. That was the number that he was maybe curious about. That was uh, one that he said that he was he was maybe interested in. Uh, but now with Ingram wearing five, and you know Taysom Hill is going to keep number seven, I'd expect him to be number 32 now, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would think left. that that would be the, the number. Cause that, that, yeah, because now Dalton's in 14 if you want him to go further back, mm. you know? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, did, did they not talk to Tyron? Like, get him, like, he didn't get first right of refusal on any of these things? I don't know <laughs> if they, like, to try to make the play while he was out of the locker room. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's high school, yeah. that's that jersey. Yeah. Look at over, like. <laughs> Huh. Just got a text that says Matthew's going to be out for a couple of days. Like, <laughs> Let me get there. Uh, take it off. Yo, today. Red Rifle. <laughs> yeah. Let's make a deal. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, it'll be cool. That, look, uh, we talked to, um, uh, we talked to um, our guy from, uh, from Locked On Saints um, yesterday, Ross Jackson, and he was telling us about the storylines that he's following 
um, you know, kind of going into today, first day of camp, what are the things that you're going to look for? Obviously, it's going to be Jameis Winston and see how he's moving out there with the chemistry and relationships like uh, with some of the pass catchers. How fast can Mike Thomas get back onto the field? It seems like that's going to uh, happen sooner rather than later. Mickey Loomis and Dennis Allen yesterday speaking with the media for an extended amount of time. And, um, you know, they, they very much were um, spelling out a scenario and a situation that didn't have any calls for panic, um, that they were being overly cautious on, on Thomas and making sure to get him back on, on the correct timeline and not push anything, not stress anything um, to kind of, you know, just throw his, his, his health off track. And it feels like um, he'll be back on the field in, in, in a pretty, uh, in pretty quick fashion here. As Dennis Allen said that he met with him yesterday and said that the, the, the message was very positive and that Thomas was going to be on the field and definitely should be prepared uh, for the start of the regular season. So I think, you know, all of the Mike Thomas stuff kind of over the summer uh, yesterday, seeing him on the pup list to start camp. Um, I, look, I think that there was a, it, definitely a cause for uh, people to be like, yo, what's going on, man, with, with, with Thomas? But after hearing from Dennis Allen, Mickey Loomis, and even Ross Jackson uh, yesterday, here, I think that Thomas is going to be uh, set to go here for, for this season. So, I mean, the, the Saints, uh, one thing that the Saints have done incredibly and they deserve so much credit for, and look, we don't cover the Saints every single day, obviously with Ron going down there. We want to extend our presence and make our presence much more well-known in that market and, and, and start to cover um, Saints, Pelicans more. Um, but what the Saints have done, something that's been incredible – to watch, in my opinion, that they have done, um, you know, better than just about anybody, is they have kind of not had to rebuild, or they have not had to rebuild in front of your face. Like they're not doing it publicly. They have been so well prepared for things and moves like Drew Brees' retirement, Sean Payton stepping away. You know, I mean, usually that will throw franchises. You know, into a tailspin, into a um, you know, just kind of a mode of trying to figure itself out for a season or two. And one thing that New Orleans has done, I think, um, you know, almost as good as anybody in the league. I'd imagine that you know, like Belichick and New England, probably the standard. And even they dip so much when they lose a Hall of Fame quarterback like Tom Brady, but they were able to kind of restabilize it through the draft and through some of their offseason moves and kind of keep themselves as contending type teams and franchises after big sudden moves. Like, I wonder how Green Bay is going to respond in losing Devonta Adams. I mean, that's the best wide receiver in the league that you're taking away from Aaron Rodgers late in his career that those guys have been knocking on the door of a, of, of, of a potential Super Bowl. But, you know, to NFC championship, knocked out in kind of dramatic fashion in the playoffs, NFC divisional rounds. I mean, they've been, it seemingly, they've kind of felt like they're, they're, they're close and then you take away a star like that away from, from Rodgers. I wonder how much they regress. You know, we're going to uh, go to uh, and, and have our what's the bet today with Caesar Sportsbook. And the promo code along with the QR code is easy to access here. If you're watching the show, it's right there in the top right of your screen. All you got to do is walk your camera up to it. Open up Caesar Sportsbook. You're logged in right there with the promo code FM15, FM15. And you can risk up to $1,500 risk-free. Uh, from our friends over at Caesar Sportsbook right now. But my bet of the day is the over-under on the Kansas City Chiefs. Ten and a half right now. Ooh. I'm going under. I mean, I think it's, it's so hard to replace. And if they go over there, it really, to my opinion, is going to be a testament to how good of a program they're running up there with in Andy KC Reed. with Andy Reid. And, and, and I guess you could, you could lump Patrick Mahomes into that because he's going to be there for the next – you know, he's going to be there for the, next the, 10 the years. foreseeable yeah, future, right? I mean, he's going to be judged – that, that franchise will be judged, you know, on his success or, or failure. So, I mean, I think it'll be a huge – this is a fork in the road for Mahomes' career, right, where you lose a guy like Tyreek Hill, even in the locker room, losing a guy like Tyron Matthew, along with all the other parts that they lost in – you know, I mean, I know a guy like Daryl Williams left, but I'm sure there were other guys other than Matthew Williams and Tyreek Hill left, but just – in knowing that team and knowing that roster and watching them play, that's three huge 
guys that make impact for them. I mean, Matthew was the leader on the defense. Tyree Kill was their biggest weapon on offense. And, you know, Daryl Williams was, at times, a feature back for them last season. Oh, he was the guy that they could just called one. Well, he's just so... Uh, he was dependable. So, uh, dependable, absolutely. And in the NFL, that will get you paid. Um... But I, I would, I, I'm going under on what's the bet today on Kansas City because I wonder if they can replace that. I wonder if they can sustain the success and um, you know the clip that they've been playing at in losing those types of players in one swoop. You know, kind of one swoop. You know, New Orleans has lost that 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 pedigree of player. I mean, Teron Armstead is a hell of a hit. Right. But you replace, you know, Armstead with a guy like Ramchek, or if, you know, Penning can step in and, and play at a high level, I mean, it's, it, it's not as much of the rebuilding that you're having to go through as much as it's, you know, you kind of compare it to SEC football where you see these, pro, you know, they see these programs, you know, more or less reloading every year. You know, like, I mean, last season was probably the year to get Ohio State and get Alabama. Right, you're not going to be able to do that this year. Right, I mean, you know even I mean? Like even that, with like two young quarterbacks at both at Alabama and Ohio State, where you would be like, all right, maybe we could take advantage of Caleb Stroud and Bryce Young, but it, they're only going to get better. Like Bryce Young is going to, I mean, he wins the Heisman last year. And you weren't really, I wouldn't say that you thought he was maybe the best player on the on their team at Alabama, and now one more year developed, they're going to take kind of the, I guess like the blinders off of him and let him sure. really cook. Yeah, Alabama's, Alabama's going to be Alabama. Yeah. Ohio State's going to be Ohio State. They're going to be better than they were last year. It feels like. No doubt. I mean, it feels like those two are on a crash course for the right. national championship. And Georgia. Yeah, and Georgia feels like the team that can kind of sneak up on you and snipe you this season. Because one thing that stands out about Georgia is that we talked a little bit about this about, about LSU. Um, Coach Hankton will be here in 10 minutes. Um, what? At right address? Yes, checked it twice. Here we go. Checked it twice. He's checking it. Now again. I'm checking yeah. it again. He's like, hold up. We might have given him the right, wrong right? address. Twenty-one forty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just sing it. Sweet. Yeah, just tell yeah. everybody. <laughs> I know. Tell Jesus, Jordan. We had guests here yesterday. Um, There's our address. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. But the one thing about it's Georgia, Alexandria. the one thing that about Georgia that stands out, and Kirby Smart is always recruiting, constantly recruiting. Oh, yeah. How many transfers do you think Georgia took this offseason? Oh, that's a good question. I don't oh, know. Uh, not many. Not many. Do you know? Like, not many. Like, how many would you guess? Three. Five. At the, I would say five, too. Nine. Five? Is it zero? He knows it's way more than that. Clearly. Zero. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I was about to say, I don't, I, I, you know I, why? I don't remember. Because they were he looks, loaded. He looks at his locker room and he's saying, we don't need anybody. Here. Yeah, we're good. Oh, everybody in here is better than anybody in the portal. So, I mean, if, if Kirby okay. Smart feels like that about his team, he knows that, hey, look, put me at five or six in the country preseason. You know, think, consider me an underdog against Alabama in the SEC title game because at that point in the season, his team could be playing at a championship elite level just because of the way that he's recruited. But on paper, because of experience, Will Anderson, Bryce Young, go up to Ohio State, the guys that they got coming back. Ohio State and Alabama look like the two heavyweights in the sport this season that are on a collision course for a national championship. Georgia does feel like the team that, you know, you look up week six, seven, and eight, you'll be like, damn, Georgia might be the best team in the country. But, yeah, why did we underrate them again after they just won a natty? I guess it's all contingent on the quarterback position, right? Doesn't that feel like the one thing if Georgia football is not – it kind of, usually college football goes how the quarterback goes. Sure. Georgia kind of bucked that trend last year with one of the greatest defenses we've probably seen, and now it's they kind of return the law firm at quarterback, yeah, and you're you not really see. sure. And he wanted to quit. He was like, I'm good. Oh. You should see the 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 just the popularity he walks around with. Absolutely. Stetson Bennett? He could have walked through SEC media days last season, just one year ago, last summer, and I'm telling you, people would have thought he would have been a staff member for the Southeastern mm -hmm. Conference. I mean, people would have been like, hey, man, which room do you go to see the Where's the your lanyard, at? sir? Yeah, absolutely. Can you fill up my water? Yeah. <laughs> take a <laughs> picture? Can you take <laughs> this picture? Yeah, right. He walked through there this season, and it was, it was Joe Burrow-type yeah. reaction, like if he was walking around in Baton Rouge, New Orleans. I mean, like— Well, he did the even, thing. Even, like, the, even the, the, the television reporters 
who cover Georgia for like stations, you could find like the little young, just graduated from high, you know, college type, like asking like, can we get a picture with you real yeah, quick? Yeah. Like after you like, like mm-hmm. they interview him, they're like, I don't like, know if we're supposed to do this. <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, it was, it's, it's his popularity and his, you can see his like just demeanor confidence has that changed has i i, I didn't know too. him i didn't know him I mean, previous it, but you can just see like i mean he's my size yeah yes. i mean like he's and bryce young for that matter is not that much bigger yeah. than me you know what i mean like i mean just standing next to him that was the biggest like oh my god like this guy is him um the the florida quarterback um anthony richardson, anthony richardson well, he's a monster yeah. and kj jefferson a from Arkansas, monster. standing next to those two guys, <laughs> and then standing next to Bryce Young, right. and standing next to Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett. Also, you know who else throw in there is Will Levis. Is an animal. Oh, it's a tank. I mean, he looks like a defensive end. That's, that's <laughs> the mayo and the coffee. Yeah, that's he right. Eats oh, the, he eats the banana that's with right. the skin. But yeah, I mean, he's he's treating his body like a temple. <laughs> the banana um, with the skin. <laughs> Jeff and Kenner, Jordy talking about size. How tall are you? Six four. Um, <laughs> but I'm five eight today. Uh, for whatever Wrong reason, I don't, I don't know what happened. It but, fluctuates. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a grower. Um, <laughs> I'm a grower. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's. I, I think George is a fascinating story. I mean, obviously, we can ask Coach Cortez Hankton a little bit about um, his thoughts on Stetson Bennett. A little bit. That's the story. Of this guy it, was going to yeah. be their starter. Yeah. Win I mean, you a I, national championship. Oh, dude! I mean, his. He will never have to pay for anything. He's Matt Flynn in Louisiana. Well, he, and that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to ride off into the sunset like Stetson, come back to school. And he's like, I don't really, yeah. how can he get better than this? I don't, wanna, I don't know if I want to mess with yeah. this legacy. Yeah, what, yeah. If I, what if I lose four games? They're not going to like me anymore. Right. Yeah, what if he does? He already went through that. Well, yeah, I mean, he is. Poor little guy. <laughs> Poor little guy. Poor well, his guy. story's so cool. I mean, you know, he's Katie, been through a lot. Katie, you would have saw how people looked at him when he came well, I know, in 2019. His, his story. The SEC championship. I know. People were like. Who is this? I know that. He's Did got a great story. Did they get him up the stands? I mean, oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Essentially. Like, they went from he's a walk on. And you know why you know I love him even more? Is his dad used to hold like Saturday morning combines in the neighborhood for, yeah. the, for the kids. He bought a piece to, like, of land over. for that. Huh? His, his dad, remember, bought a piece of land oh, no, next no, no, to no, his office for that. I know. The story's incredible. What a, what a recruiter. Yeah. I just can only cool. imagine how good his flag football teams were coming up. Oh, my God. Yeah, don't get it. I am going to make a play after Coach Hankins' kid as well. Okay. New to the area. Uh, Jesse guys. McCormick, our friend uh, Jesse McCormick over at Relief Med and around uh, and around the uh, the state legislature, um, is putting together a little a little first grade team. And the word on the street is Coach Hanks' yeah. young son first trip. Super, yeah, is transfer player. portal first player <laughs> in the portal. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah, <laughs> so we're gonna get the, we're gonna get the status yes. of young trip here where he's where he's gonna fit in during the uh, the flag season. Uh, watch your step back there, Bree. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to set up here. Coach Hankton's going get to get in here in a couple of minutes. If you have a question uh, for LSU's wide receivers, Coach, uh, get it inside the huddle. Uh, ask Coach Hank. Also, our mailbag questions coming up today. Uh, hashtag mailbag. Of course, you can call in, leave a voicemail at 225-229-7741, 225-229-7741. Uh, is the phone number if you want to just call in and leave a voicemail. Remember our friends over at Men's Total Health, online at menstotalhealth.net, as you can get down there if you're suffering uh, from low testosterone. You can go in and see Mike Roach and the great crew over at Men's Total Health. Their goal is to provide you with the best possible comprehensive health care available today online at menstotalhealth.net. If you're suffering uh, from uh, sleep deprivation. What's going on? Trying to, get, trying to get just, yeah. yes. <laughs> trying to get my tea up, dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> you need to go see Mike Roach. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got you in over there. You didn't get me in yet. Yeah, you said yeah, we got to yeah, go. You got to confirm. Did the initial setup. Yes, yes. Um, Let's follow through. Yes. So yeah. this actually would going be impre- on. So this would be impressive. A text. <laughs> yeah, yes. Or two. To remind me. <laughs> yes. Um, but if, you, if you're suffering from OT and uh, you're having trouble sleeping, uh, you can't keep your muscle mass on. Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, no That's sex drive. That's Go, see problem, Mike right. Go see Mike Go see Mike Lloyd. Lloyd would be our standard here. Uh, menstotalhealth.net. Menstotalhealth.net. And Katie will be telling you about I some will. of the ways that they can help the ladies. They can help the ladies, too. Uh, we can talk about that another time. You're blushing. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm not at all, but they do have. I will talk Email about her. the Ozempic shot. They do have that, and I know a lot of people are looking for that, and that uh, that helps with weight loss. And I've been on it for three weeks now. Feeling great. 
Make sure that is want that anymore. one too. Lloyd's pump so me jealous. Full, yeah, pump yeah. me full of everything. Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd's so give jealous. me every shot. They have Lloyd it there. You, looking just, 12. Yeah. you just get over to Dr. Roach and uh, y'all can email me and I'll give y'all details on that too. <laughs> Men's Total Health dot net. Go see them. They're down in uh, they're down in uh, New Orleans. Down Battery. on uh, takes Vets. no time to get there. Forty five minutes. Yeah, it's easy drive uh, right off the interstate. Uh, exit at Vets and uh, you'll find them there. Um, mention that you heard it here on the Jordy Colada Show. Men's Total Health dot net. Men's Total Health dot net. When we come back, LSU wide receivers coach Cortez Hankton in studio with us talking about the upcoming season and what it's like to be back home here coaching that spot for LSU. We are driven and powered by Go Chevrolet every day. So make sure you hit that like, share, and comment button. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. We've seen the BK Takeover stuff. <laughs> from from LSU yeah. and, and social media and um, really in his short time in Baton Rouge, there's been a lot of people embracing his mm -hmm. his, his approach to, to building this roster. What's it like to recruit alongside him? Oh, it's been it's been great. Coach has been awesome to me because he lets me you know lets me be myself when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to, to coaching. He lets his coaches coach, lets his coaches recruit. So I have no complaints on that on that end. And when I need him to get in touch with a kid, he's there for me. Um, the communication line has been has been great. He's just been nothing but supportive. But this opportunity was different. Um, you have a chance to come to a place with unbelievable tradition, uh, work for the winningest head coach in college football. Um, just be at a state. I've never been at a state where yeah. football's king, I, you know, and it, it, if you just dominate your state, you're going to get some of the best players that there are. Sure. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, getting through spring, I mean, most of it was obviously just installing the offense. Um, and I, I think all four guys uh, really made some strides in terms of that and, and showed a lot of positives, um, obviously, which – you know, I mean, you guys get to talk about all the time, so you guys, you <laughs> sure. know, yeah. Uh, but uh, the, all four have, have done a great job. They did, I, I think, they really did a really nice job in spring of taking strides forward uh, individually, and everybody, and everybody's different in terms of what they need to get better at and and what they need to show. Um, and then moving into summer, and and I love the way they're working right now in the weight room for Coach Flint. Um, but like I said, I think I think spring a lot was. It was everything was new for everybody. So that, especially at the beginning, there wasn't as much evaluation, say, the first few days, um, get into the flow. And then I think uh, we got some good opportunities for some guy to get, guys to get some reps. And I think everybody showed some positives. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life. But in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyra Lacey, Greg Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. Uh, best athlete to come out of New Iberia, Mark Roman? Kayshawn Buddha. Kayshawn? Wow. Wow. Right now. Kayshawn, you know, and I, Mark was a little bit before me. I was a ball boy uh, when when Mark was playing at New Iberia Senior High School. Uh, I, play, I played like right after Mark, um, but Kayshawn just has just done some things, and you know, just the things that you guys are seeing Kayshawn do that he's not even scratching the surface of what we saw 
on a day to day basis at practice, you know, and and, and it's he's unreal. He's he, unreal. He's so natural. It's so na it's it's yeah. so easy. It looks so easy to him. Yes, it's so easy, and that there's never been another a, a competitor I've ever seen like Kayshawn. Kayshawn would not lose going to eat pregame meal. <laughs> you know, he has to be the first. He is the ultimate competitor. You know, he would not lose. So trust me, he will be ready. Uh Man, so um, kind of when I um, entered the transfer board, I knew, you know, um, where, what type of uh, facility, what type of, you know, program I wanted to go to, you know, being that uh, before I committed to Ohio State, my first unofficial was to LSU. Oh, wow. And, uh, but that was when Coach, you know, Coach O and uh, Corey Raymond was here or whatever. But um, definitely uh, the coaches, you know, the scheme, Kelly, you know, trying to bring in, trying to implement, you know, his uh, way of going, like, Detail, detailed person, you know. Um, that's that's where I wanted to be. I know where I want to be. Did you have any experience with Coach Kelly? No, I, never, I have no experience. No. Really? Mm. Uh, who was your main recruiter from LSU? Uh, Sherman Sherman Wilson. Mm. Yeah, he he was. You know, stay consistent. You know, honest. You know, you know, just you know, gave it to me straight. Yeah. You know, and this where I wanted to be. Uh, yeah. How do you how do you feel about that number at this university playing that position? Yeah, man, I, I definitely want it. You know, I definitely. He want to come in and prove, you know, to my teammates, not just the coaches, but to my teammates that I got to go play with, you know, that, you know, I deserve it. And, and once I do that, you know, then you know, everything is, you know, up from there. Yeah. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each. All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, live on this Wednesday. We appreciate it if you hit that like button, share button, comment button. It has been really cool to get to know uh, LSU's staff here under Coach Brian Kelly, staff and players that have come in here for the first season. Uh, we have been looking forward to catching up with South Louisiana's own Cortez Hankton, who is back, at, uh, back in South Louisiana, uh, coaching the wide receivers at LSU, and he is in studio here with us. On this Wednesday, Coach, good morning. Thank you for your time, man. Good, good morning, Jordan. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, we've asked everybody that's come through here, and everybody's got a different story, and it's a really cool way of getting here. Um, but for you, I think everybody's curious. How, how did you end up back home? How did you end up on Coach Kelly's staff? You, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, the first time that it was actually put out in the media was around the SEC Championship. Yeah. And, you know, when you're in it, you try to be in it so you don't pay much attention to it. But as the weeks go by and <laughs> the more people ask you questions, I think that sometimes you have to address it. Um, and I think it, it really became close to a reality in terms of pursuing opportunity at the middle of the playoffs. Yeah. You know? But I wanted to make sure I was committed to the guys, committed to um, the program in terms of the last place I was at to give ourselves the best chance to go ahead and win one. And then as soon as that, that game was over, you know, a decision had to be made. Yeah. You know, doing my research in terms of tracking Coach Kelly and what he's done in every program that he's been, not just in terms of victories and winning football games, but also the, the development of the young men in his program, but also the growth and opportunity in terms of his staff. Yeah. And I was impressed with what I found. And so, you know, we had conversations. And, and I thought it was a great opportunity to move forward with, especially being in my home state. Absolutely. You know? So it, it's definitely good to be back home. Uh, what did you know about Brian Kelly 
just before you jumped into doing the research, what was what was kind of your your thought of him in just being in the coaching fraternity? That he was a winner. You know, had a proven track re record of turning programs around. Um, even even talking to some of the guys that played for him, they really enjoyed playing for Coach Kelly. And what they talked about was not just in terms of him helping them develop as a football player, but also in terms of the, 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 the professional growth, yeah. the emphasis on academics. And it, you know, anytime those values are aligned, you know, there's, there's some, some, some chemistry there. And, and, and you know, it was definitely um, something that I wanted to, to connect with. How cool was last season for you, getting to the, the, the top of the mountain and being a national champion on that staff with Georgia? Man, it, awesome. And really, words can't explain it because, um, you know, once you get there, it's a, you realize it's a product of all the hard work, mm -hmm. the sacrifice, the time that's put into it. And, um, you know, it, there's nothing like it. Absolutely. And, you know, and the goal is to bring one back here. Yeah. Um, what is your thoughts of the LSU job being in, in the coaching fraternity, whether it's just the wide receiver's job or being on staff here? The way that I, I guess it was sold to Brian Kelly is that there's only one university that's had multiple head coaches win national championships over the last 20 years. As a guy who's on the staff now recruiting to that, what's the thought of LSU's job and kind of what you're selling on the recruiting trail? Well, first and foremost, the culture. The, uh, how unique it is in terms of the location, being a big time program in the state. You know, it, we can't forget about the fuel, the music, yeah. and everything that plays in part of just the, the overall flavor of, of the program, you know, and it all matters. When you think about the people in the state, like it all matters. It matters to be a winner, mm -hmm. right? Um, they take pride in their, their football teams, especially LSU. Sure. And so when you're talking about the attractiveness of a job and opportunity, you know, I don't think there's another place like it. Um, how cool was it to come home? How cool was it to make that call? It, of it, well, you know, it was interesting because so and I'm about to tell my age. I graduated in 1998 from St. Ove. OK. OK. So born and raised in uptown New Orleans. And I hadn't lived in a state since 1998. And when, when I got back, you know, I didn't realize how much I missed being back home. Yeah. And I, I didn't realize how much I missed the food either. You know, <laughs> if you're talking about a challenge. I, I think that's one of <laughs> that's been one of the biggest challenges is to turn away food. A bet. You know, and I just bet. having the access to all you the... Seemed to have done a good yeah, job. To, to <laughs> yeah, hey, man, it seems like I have to work even harder <laughs> now. But um, it's, it's been awesome to be home, to be close to family, um, for my parents to be around, um, their grandchildren. Uh -huh. You know, that's, that's pretty neat. And just to see the boys interact with cousins and families, you know, that, that's the things that are not talked about in terms of why this place is so special to me because... You know, it, it truly hits home. You were able to, uh, to 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 have some success in recruiting here in the cycle. We were able to go outside of the state and have a real high-end player from a popular part of, of the country in South Florida. How do you view Louisiana in recruiting, being a local from here and understanding the mentality of the players and and also being away from Louisiana for so long and I'd imagine coming back in here and, and, and recruiting to it? Well, in terms of the players and the mentality that come out of the state, there's always going you always have a natural grit about yourself, a, a natural competitiveness. You always want to win. Um, and for our guys, we always just try to go get it. Mm -hmm. And so you, you try to find like minded individuals in terms of what you're looking for, not only here, but, you know, nationally, because make no mistake, although everybody in the state loves LSU, LSU is still a national brand. You know, and so we're gonna always do whatever we can to bring the best players that are fit for our program here to help us, you know, achieve our goals. Um, how did you? How has recruiting gone for you up to this point? Because I think the the, the biggest challenge that you guys had, and, and one that was very much, um, you, you couldn't relate it to anything that I could ever remember was the rebuilding of the roster that you guys had to take on. And you did it through so many ways, mm -hmm. through a signing class, through transfer portals, through graduate transfer. You've even kind of spun the momentum into, into this 23 class as well. H how has it been hitting the ground kind of running to get to this point? Well, in this profession, you understand that one thing, that recruiters is always going to be the bloodline of your program. And so you always have to hit that head first and you always have to address the needs of your roster and be very, very smart about how you approach it and how you attack it. It's also a 24-7, 365 job. Mm -hmm. 
And so when you're in that grind, you understand that it's all about selling your program, making sure they understand that this is the best opportunity for them, but also cultivating relationships because people matter. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, when you're talking to parents or the people that are really influencing these kids life, they want to make sure that these young men are going to a place where they're going to be surrounded by people that truly, truly care about them and have a genuine care and concern for their well-being first and foremost. Yeah. And then now who is going to help them reach their full potential? And so as a staff, you know, those are the things that we want to make sure that we highlight. And we also want to find the guys that's going to be a fit for, for what we're trying to accomplish. And that's both on and off the football field. What were your goals going into spring? And were you able to accomplish those? Well, are you talking about from a recruiting standpoint? No, or sir. Program? On the field. Well, we want to always address and, and make sure we know the guys in our building. And first and foremost, before even football – you know, became a true part of it, we wanted to get to know the young men in the building mm -hmm. and develop those relationships. And I think that, you know, one of the neat things about sitting down as an offensive staff the first week, and I'll never forget it, you know, Mike D, he sat at the head of that table and they said, before we even dive into football, what we're going to do is we're going to pour into these young men. Mm -hmm. and, and you're talking and, about Denbrock. Yeah, yes, so, so, so Coach Denbrock. And so when you have, you know, your offensive leader, who believes in that, and that, that, that starts at the top, man, that, that's a great thing because now we know everybody in our building, <laughs> like our values are aligned. And, and first and foremost, it's all about the young men and, and truly caring about them. What do you make of your room? Your room is very talented and deep. What, what do you make of, of your group now getting to know them off the field, coaching them for 15 practices during spring, and now here set to go into fall camp? I think we're actually talented. Competitive, um, but but the thing that I was the most impressed about, man, was um, the way they were able to apply teaching in spring. I had never seen anything like it. It, it was like, man, we, I was teaching something, and you can see it happen on the field in competitive environments almost instantly. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that, man, you can tell that the guys are truly engaged, receiving what you're talking about, and you know they, they're working to be great. They're working to be better and never being satisfied. Now, make no mistake, it's never going to be perfect. Yeah. You know, the game, the game of football is uh, imperfect in itself, just the way, that the, the, the way it's played, um, the way it occurs. But, you know, the guys in my room, I love them. I, I really developed a relationship with a lot of them before because I recruited them at mm -hmm. other places. Sure. So, you know, I, I knew the background, knew most of the wise, the family, and um, I think that really helped the transition be, you know, seamless. Yeah. Um, if right, you might have the best player in the country in Kayshawn Booty in your room. What have you made of his rehab and kind of where he is now? There's some film that came out from him at the Manning Passing Academy where he looked he looked like Kayshawn. Um, wh what do you make of him going into his third season? First, it's, it's uh, mental and emotional growth outside of the physical standpoint. Um, what I can really appreciate about him when he – in spring – he was truly engaged on the sideline yeah. with his teammates, with an offense, asking questions. And those are the things that take it takes to be a pro. And he displayed that. And so, you know, every day is going to be an opportunity for growth. And I think that he's done a good job with that. Yeah. Jack Besh last year was kind of cross training. They mm -hmm. had him at tight end. They put him at wide receiver. Anywhere that they put him, he was successful. Now they have him primarily focused on – his natural position at wide receiver. What are your expectations from him in year two? Just for him to just com to be the competitive guy that he is, the hungry guy that he is. You can tell that he plays the game with a chip on his shoulder, blue collar mentality, and you know those those are the dudes that we like. And I, I think that that personality, that character, really um, permeates all throughout our room. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it, it's fun to be a part of. Yeah, Malik Neighbors feels like he's the next one, the next superstar. Um, there, there was some video that came out where the, you were mic'd up one day during practice, and you could tell you and him have a very good rapport with one another. Uh, what was it like kind of coaching him through spring, and what do you expect of him here in, in this well, season? Well, and, and once, once again, it goes back to relationship, and, and Malik was one that I recruited when he was a lot younger, when I was at another school. So there was already some rapport that, and I, I just know how hungry the young man is to be great. And so when you understand the why and the motivation of somebody and you can go ahead and you can push those buttons, I think you really put them in a position where they can put their skill set on display. Yeah. 
You mentioned Denbrock. What's the relationship like with the offensive coordinator? How do those conversations flow? And what, what's it been like kind of working within that offense for the first couple of months? Well, first and foremost, great to learn from a great mind. And the, the one thing about our offensive staff, I think you have a great collection of guys that, that, that don't have egos. Yeah. And when you have that, you have everybody that's willing to learn from everyone else in the room, but also everyone input is valuable. And so that's how you grow as a staff, that's how you develop chemistry, and that's how you put our guys in the best position. Um, you and Frank Wilson have to be hell to recruit against in the state of Louisiana, and especially in New Orleans. Um, what has it been like to work alongside him, and what has that relationship been like before you now have worked together in the same staff? Well, I, I mean, I, I go back, you know, one, we, we both purple. I got I to gotta say that. I graduated from St. Aug, and Purple Knights. So, yeah. you know, naturally, you know your family and that, but he's always someone that has been like a big brother figure to me. Uh, we had conversations when I was first trying to get into coaching, and, you know, he helped me along the way. Um, but, I mean, it's been awesome because, like, for me and for everybody else, there is always an opportunity to learn. So being around him, you know, in a short time from a professional standpoint, I've learned a lot. Yeah. And, you know, once again, you know, everything that I've, I've attacked in my life is with a humble and hungry mentality. And I feel like every situation and every opportunity, there, there is um, an area for growth, mm -hmm. an area to learn. And um, he's definitely a guy that I can learn from. You were on staffs at Vanderbilt, you were on staffs at Georgia, you're now on this LSU staff, and we've had a chance to meet all of you guys that have come through here in a full-time position. And, and we've just had this point of view uh, of you guys for an extended conversation, uh, 45 minutes to an hour. But it all seems like you guys get along and like one another. And I'd imagine in the coaching industry, that's pretty tough to do, putting together a bunch of alphas into one room. Is that the right read on what Coach Kelly has done here in your Man, one man, you spot on. And um... – so it, there is, I, I'm gonna tell you this, outside of just the work, because it's a grind. Yeah. And, and one thing that you have to understand when you're in this profession, you, you gotta like the people that you're around. And so uh, we have some comedians in the room. You know, I, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you Denver? right now, yeah, Coach D funny, but yeah. Brad Davis might be the funniest <laughs> guy that I've ever been around. I'm, I mean, like, like seriously. But, you know, just when you go around the room between Joe, Brad, Frank, Mike D. I mean, and we got a bunch of guys on the on the support staff that you know the comedy, you know, yeah. just keeps rolling. You yeah. know, Carter Sheridan is also a guy. We were in high school together. Wow. And you know, he he's like a brother to me as well. So, you know, it's it's fun. It's truly fun to go to work. Like yeah. I enjoy what I do. I love what I do. But you know, I love it even more that I'm able to actually do it at LSU. Uh, Denbrock sat right there and said that his quarterback room, he believes, is as fierce a competition as you'll find in the country. Um, what do you make of that position? And, and does that spot change your play with whoever it is? I don't, I don't think so. I think offensively we're going to do what we do. But, you know, you always remember, you're going to play to the strengths of your players. You're going to play to the strengths of your roster. And however that competition unfolds, we're going to make sure that we maximize the skills for whoever is, yeah. is, is going to pull that trigger. Yeah. Um, Chris Hilton, Brian Thomas, two young guys that you can see their, their potential and capability. How have you seen their growth? Love them. Extremely skilled. Extremely bright. Yeah. You know, I think they're both guys who pick up the game really fast. You know, they're also two guys that I had an opportunity to recruit, you know, at the other place. Sure. And, you know, it's – it's, it's ironic how it happens because, you know, I think about all these guys I recruited, and, of course, I lost the recruiting battle because they came here, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad they're yeah, here yeah. because now I had an opportunity gotcha. to come. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I noticed how you don't, you don't reference where you were, and, and I know how much that means in recruiting, but can you take me back to that matchup between George Pickens and Derek Stingley Jr. Mm -hmm. in the SEC championship game when you were looking at probably two of the best at their position just from – from your side because Pickens had some success in the second half that day and Stanley might have played his best game as a Tiger yeah that day. You, you know it, it's fun to watch man it, it's fun to watch elite players go against each other yeah and you had two guys who you can tell were looking forward to the matchup right and so when you see guys go to work in the battles that are won and lost I mean it's just fun to watch it's, it's just part of the game of football and and I know that 
neither were intimidated by the guy down on the other side. The accolades didn't matter. The stars didn't matter. It, the only thing that matters is when that snap happened, like, what's going to happen? Yeah. You know, <laughs> where are we going to go with it? Yeah. And so it was good to see. Yeah. And I, I'm sure they're going to have some more battles on Sundays, too. Yeah. So look forward to seeing that. How good was Burrow, Chase, Jefferson, Terrence, Marshall, and crew that year from your, your, your point of view, seeing them up close like you did that day? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just go on record and say this. To me personally, I felt like that was the best football team that I that I've ever seen, um, offensively. And then even watching them live and and you know, <laughs> being on the other side of it. Unfortunately, it was um, as an offensive guy, it was good to see the efficiency that they work with, the the the, the chemistry that they had, and just the every moment was an explosive moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it was just it was just fun to watch. But not only that, man, the energy behind it. The energy behind it was just live. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. it was it was just this weird feeling being on the other side because you know they playing that good local music. You hear some <laughs> of that, that bounce. And you know, being from New Orleans yeah. it's all so so familiar, but yeah. you, you have to contain yourself because at the same time you're trying to bust their head open on right. the other side. Absolutely. Um but once again that that was yeah, that was a, a really great team to watch. And, um, you know, those uh, you, you see those guys making some of those same plays now on Sundays. You leave the best team in the SEC East and come over to the SEC West. What's your point of view of the league of the SEC? Regardless, regardless of the vision, first and foremost, every, every week in the SEC is going to be a battle. It is a headbanger. Like, there's no such thing as an off week. Um, I truly believe that. Uh, now, coming over to the West, you know, it's truly thick with talent. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's truly thick with competition. You got a lot of teams over here who have an opportunity to truly be great, and they're, they're loaded with talent. Yeah. You know, but that's what we do, right? We embrace the competition. We look forward to those matchups. That's why we play in this conference. And that's, you know, that's why I look forward to, you know, coaching on Saturdays. Yeah. Have you had a chance to think about first game, Superdome, New Orleans, Sunday afternoon, prime time. I know you'll Look, be zoned you, into it. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you, you know it's on a schedule, but at the same token, man, we got a lot of opportunities to get better before that, mm -hmm. you know, and it's truly day by day. And I know, like, it, it's, it's coach speak, but the reality of it is we got to make sure that we're taking advantage of every waking moment to put ourselves in the best position, to put our best foot forward, to put mm -hmm. our best product on the field. And, you know, I think as long as we worry about us first and foremost, then we give ourselves a chance to win. And, you know, we'll get into the game planning and strategizing and all of that, but we got to make sure the LSU Tigers are straight first. How much of the ancillary parts of being a college football player have improved since you were playing at Texas Southern or since you've been in the coaching game, like the nutrition part and the strength and training part and the facilities? Man, first off, don't we can't even talk about nutrition because I just remember when I was at TSU, our, uh, after the game, we would have, like, churches or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm Pizza saying? So for like, everybody, like, right? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. it, it, it was just is different and it's, it's crazy. Now, here's the one thing I will say. Um, in this day and age, I can say that I think that sometimes the guys are spoiled just with the resources that are in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, now to, to their benefit, you know, I think that the, the, the improvements that um, or the advances in technology and nutrition and, and you just seeing guys are putting themselves in a, a better position to become pros, mm -hmm. you know, by taking care of their body from what they eat, how they sleep, uh, understanding how the body works just in terms of the load, you know, with the GPS systems and things of that nature. So, you know, it's for the benefit of them. Yeah. As long as they take advantage of it, I, I, I think all of it is awesome. John Emery came through here and was just, he couldn't stop talking about how his body's changing under Jake Flint and, mm -hmm. and how much it's more productive and he's seeing more energy come out of it in, in different ways. How have you seen his, his tactics in the offseason and building you guys and getting you ready for, for fall camp? Well, it's not just about just the strength and conditioning. It's about the team building and the cohesiveness and the accountability. You know, those are the things that are really good to see because you see a team forming. Yeah. You know, you see a collective where it's not just about an individual. It's about a team. And, you know, and sometimes within those teams you have clicks, but it's intentionally done with these groups. They have all different positions. Yeah. It's not just receivers, the DBs, quarterbacks, and whoever else. You know, they're, they're truly teams. So um, what he's doing is working, and I'm, I'm glad to, to be working alongside with them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you talk about the team-building process, how does a college football team use the summer when you don't have 
as much access to them as I imagine you would like as a coach. Well, that's where the player leadership comes in. And, and, and you can provide the tools and information for the, go, the guys to go out and do what they have to do. But they, they literally give them the keys and you give them the vehicle, but they have to drive it. Yeah. You know, and it is play, it's truly player living. And, um, it's, it's truly player led. And I think that they've done a good job with that. Um, and it has gotten better. And that speaks to the growth and the maturity that we're seeing on this football team. Yeah, everybody comes through here is talking about like the SWAT teams mm -hmm. and what that's done to the, the, the locker room. I guess that, that, that's that natural accountability you talk yeah, and, about. Yeah, and that's, and that's where the accountability um, that I spoke of is, is truly being a part of those SWAT teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's here, huh, man? I mean, are you, are you in it yet? Are you still kind of getting prepared for it, or, or is football season here Man, for you? I'm always in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and even when you're not physically in it, it's hard to get your mind off of it, um, especially when you're just trying to – your wheels are spinning up, uh, in terms of just trying to find ways – to help you guys get better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's crazy that, you know, I feel like I'm still young in this coaching profession, but I'm going into my what, my 11th season coaching. Wow. And it's, you know, it's already here, and it goes by so fast. So for me, you know, I've gotten to the point where I'm just trying to like truly embrace it because I remember as a player, you hated camp, man. It was like, damn, training camp. You know, back then it was two a day, sometimes yeah. even three a days. You know, coach would be slick and try to sneak another <laughs> rat. Yeah, right, right. But, um, you know, this is an opportunity for us to bond because we, we this is when we really spend the most time with mm -hmm. the guys. And, you know, it like this is where, you know, your tools are truly – you know, form, yeah. the team bond, the mental toughness, the physical toughness, all of that, man. You know, camp is the grind. That's where you get that grip from to go get it. Yeah. You know, and it's about to be that time to yeah. go and get it. So we're looking forward to it. And Louisiana Heat will bring it out of you too. Oh, hey, right? without a question. Yeah. Without a question. You're talking about leaking, man, as soon as you walk <laughs> outside. <laughs> right. Um, how do you look at your recruiting board? Do you say I'm taking a specific amount of players this year or I'm just going after specific players in this cycle? Well, I think it's a combination of both based on your needs. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I, and I'm going to speak generally because, yeah. you know, you never like to get into too specific. So if there are certain things you feel like you want to address, you, you try to address it. So, for instance, if you're looking for a guy that has more size, then you're going to try to find the best player with more size. If you're looking for a guy that has some juice or speed, then you're going to look for the guys that has, you know, the most speed. And that's typically how you approach it. And you always look at what you have coming in and what you have going out. And, you know, and at, at the end of the day, we all as a staff have to make sure that our numbers are right so, so we could properly you know, manage our roster. Absolutely. Make sure you pick out a pair of uh, dead Soxy socks, Coach, that you want uh, for uh, right here in the, uh, in, in, the, in the drawers before you get out of here. This conversation and interview brought to you by our friends at Dead Soxy. I appreciate you stopping by, man, and coming through here. You're the last of uh, the assistant coaches. We saved the best for last. But one thing I can say, and I go back to, I asked you about in an interview, um, it's it's a collection of it looks just like good people, man. Mm -hmm. And and when you you put together good people that are pulling in the same direction, usually good stuff happens. So uh, looking forward to watch you guys work in your one. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. There is uh, Coach Cortez Hankton stopping in the building this morning, talking LSU wide receivers fall camp, all getting geared up for next week. We'll be back with more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. 
I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done! Yeah, you know, it's kind of weird in a perverse way, Jordy. You know me well, is that I, I kind of relish the change, and I do like it. I'm one of the few people that, that embraces it, and we're very lucky at LSU to have it, uh, uh, to be where we are and to be able to do that. I mean, I can't say that for everyone in the business because it is uh, unsettling uh, in, in a lot of ways. But for us, you know, change is a good thing, and I think um, I think we're going to be the beneficiary of it. And it's not going to it's not going to stop. It's just going to keep on going. Yeah. And I'd be lying to you if I told you I had a crystal ball and can tell you what was going on and what's going to happen. But you know, it's it's we're going to be here and we're going to embrace it and we're going to uh, take uh, advantage of it uh, the best we can. We're going to do it right. You know, the Tiger Athletic Foundation and and uh, in, in partnership, obviously, hand in hand with what we do, uh, funded a, a master plan study because I wanted to see, hey, what what we needed, and I, I just didn't want my opinion. I've been a sure. few places, and I have a good one, I think. But you just want to see how and what our needs are, and so we're in that process of looking at it. And obviously, the PMAC is is. Uh, 50 years old this year and uh, yeah. and probably needs some updating. Uh, it's, it's got good bones, and maybe we can see what we can do with that. Uh, same thing with all that, uh, you know, property that we have both down Nicholson and where we are currently on Nicholson and North Stadium. Is that, hey, is this the proper use and best use for that? Mm -hmm. And hand-in-hand hand with the university and, and what we do with TAF, uh, we'll make those decisions and we'll be prudent and, and thinking about what and how we do it. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyra Lacey, Greg Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. So join our team. Make a difference. Bet. Let's get it done. Uh, best athlete to come out of New Iberia, Mark Roman? Kayshawn Booter. Kayshawn? Wow. Wow. Right now, Kayshawn's, you know, and I, Mark was a little bit before me. I was a ball boy uh, when, when Mark was playing at New Iberia Senior High School. Uh, I, play, I played, like, right after Mark. Um, but Kayshawn just has just done some things, and, you know, just the things that you guys are seeing Kayshawn do, that he's not even scratching the surface of what we saw on a day-to-day -day basis at practice. You know, and and, and it's, he's unreal. He's he, unreal. He's so natural. It's so na it's it's yeah. so easy. It looks so easy to him. Yes, it's so easy, and that there's never been another a, a competitor I've ever seen like Kayshawn. Kayshawn would not lose going to eat pregame meal. <laughs> you know, he has to be the first. He is the ultimate competitor. You know, he would not lose. So trust me, he will be ready. We hooked up over there? All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. It's mailbag day here, so if you got a question, you jump inside of the chat, hashtag mailbag, or you can call us up, voicemail open and uh, operating for you today. We'll be up at the uh, the South Stadium Suites uh, today for lunch. Katie and I will. Rotary. Uh, Battler's well, Rotary. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, you can come. Get a little social media. Is this, yeah, uh, I would, uh, I'd kick the socks and Birkenstocks look, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fit right in. Is it, this isn't the same. This is at the time when Edo went into the... Yes, it's called Derek. 
Yeah, this is Call Derek. It's Derek. his coach's yeah. birthday today, too. Wow. Oh, Call cool. Derek. Call Derek. Maybe How's he celebrating? It. Yeah, that's oh, coach. He's, yeah. he's in Miami right now. Yeah. Anybody see my phone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might be in Atlanta. Yeah, check under those couple of blondes yeah, over yeah. there, coach. <laughs> Brazier, Brazier. <laughs> yeah, right. Got three or four sleeping next uh, to him. That's so weird. Today. It's like... Uh, Y'all sing happy birthday to he me. He woke up like Jerry Buss on Wintertime. That's yeah. exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> Jerry Buss Wintertime. Have a bath test. A one, a two, a one, two. Everybody, happy birthday. <laughs> Do it again. Start yeah, right. over. I mean, <laughs> Got to get it on camera. They'll bring it up, right? They'll What's bring that? it up at Rotary probably, huh? What? They'll wish him happy birthday. No, no shit. shit. It's over. Uh, no way. You can't. Katie, why don't you will. ask? Yeah, no you can way. do it. I'll yeah, do it. right. That's Question in the back. <laughs> Someone will. I was hey, just coach, wondering if we could wish. Hey, Coach, coach Kelly. Kelly yeah. <laughs> when I did that. Hey, Coach <laughs> Kelly, one before you get out of here. <laughs> did Derek? you call Ed Osheron today? <laughs> <laughs> did you call Derek? <laughs> no, but Derek keeps calling me. <laughs> yeah. By in the back. Yeah. Like, Fucking Kalata. <laughs> yeah, God. I got Ron in New Orleans. I got Kalata here. <laughs> Old Ronnie on his way to New Orleans. Oh, he's, he's, he's so I, happy. Right I know now. he's not speeding. Yeah. Easy drive for Ron. Yeah, right. <laughs> 60 in the right lane. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, right. Set it on cruise. That was more suspicious. <laughs> no uh, remember to get your questions in. Hashtag mailbag. We're brought to you every day by GoFlow IV. G E A U X Flow IV.com. GoFlow IV.com. Thanks for Coach Hankton stopping through here. As uh, Very it was glad great he to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Hank, bro. Coach Relax. Hank. That's two different looks at 41. Know. That's right. 41 over here. <laughs> 41 over there. <laughs> like, real no. different. Jordy, you're just a uh, Yeah, Hank. right. I was crushing on Hank. Yeah. Everybody was crushing on Hank. Me and we were back there like, damn. Back there drooling. Yeah, right. Coach, you need that <laughs> in home visit. Let's go check those chairs. <laughs> Let me slip those socks on for you. Make sure they it's not the fit. only body slipping around here. <laughs> Kick those shoes off, Coach. Yeah. Comfortable, why don't you? His shoe actually, game was strong. Actually, too. I'll, I'll Damn, those pants nice. come off. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. that top button if you don't mind for us, Coach. Uh, but that was good stuff from uh, from Coach Hankton talking about uh, his wide receiver room, expectation on Kayshawn Butte. Uh, I'm, I'm going booty boat, uh, booty. I, I, I don't know you what's happening. He saying says booty. booty. He says booty. booty. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I was just you t- the Mama first time I've heard booty. it was today. All right. The first time I noticed the switch. So, yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm going booty. Yeah, booty call. It is booty. Uh, it is. Some people say booty, but it is. I just, well, that's just. I Does he have the hyphen over one e? No, it's just. Wait, like, I thought he did. My, I have a brother. I have a half brother, and his last name is Booty. Booty, whatever you want to call it, and people call him Booty. So. What does he say? He says Josh Booty. His, oh, name. his name's Josh Booty. Joshua, <laughs> yep, and it's spelled like Kayshans. Is that weird? Wow. Well, yeah, Josh, Josh Booty is a Josh Booty, yeah. Yeah, pretty, Josh pretty big a, name down here. A former LSU quarterback. Yeah. Oh. Former number one. And he did, my brother didn't pick. play any sports. Uh, <laughs> like, not that one. 96. He's cooked. He's Whatever, black. What, what year was Peyton? What year was Peyton Manning? Peyton Manning and Josh Booty came out in the same recruiting mm-hmm. cycle. Really? So they were the ninety three, ninety four cycle. Ninety four, I believe. Because Peyton Manning was a Heisman finalist in 96. Hmm. Um, hmm. But, hmm. I mean, a lot like LSU or Louisiana this year, they had the top two quarterbacks in the country that year in Josh Booty and Peyton Manning. And actually, Josh Booty was rated higher than Peyton Manning. That's happened to Peyton his whole life. And they both played, like, 2A high school football. Well, Evangel and Newman... But Evangel was I want to the, say Booty was playing like a national schedule. Yeah, that's more when, of a regional schedule how back do you, then. How do you pronounce this city here? Baton Rouge. Booty. Boote. How do you pronounce the city? No, that's Boote. Okay. Isn't it spelled the same way? Mm-hmm. I just yeah. thought people here pronounce that Boote no matter what. And I always thought Kayshawn was pronounced Boote. When did this we change? We can just ask him. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he says would, booty. Though. I could call yeah, my brother. He says next. booty. <laughs> how do you pronounce yeah, that's how you know, Kayshawn. He just, I, I don't really care. <laughs> He's I mean, like, might not. I just worry about football. You'll call me whatever you want. It's going to be curious. Whoever's calling, it's going to be a number one pick on the other end. Mm-hmm. Bet, bet. I'm just curious. Yeah. Bet, get it done. <laughs> get it done. <laughs> I bet Gordon was just like. Okay. All oh, right. Man. Let's try it again. Keep it. <laughs> One take for for, for Kayshawn. Josh Booty was good? the quarterback? Quarterback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but he was drafted number one overall in the Major League Baseball draft. Really? Yeah. Where did he go? He was drafted by the Florida Marlins 
and he could never make it out of the minor leagues. He was, Aww. I mean, in I guess in the terms of it, this is familiar. I guess I might. He would be. Known I mean, this. he would be a bust because he was the number one pick. Um, where but is he now? fifth pick overall. Does anyone know where was he, he the is fifth now? pick? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I will never forget this though. The craziest baseball highlight I've ever seen in my life in person. We were at Denham Springs High School, and Evangel was playing in the state championship, and my uncle was um, umpiring baseball at the time, and we were out there watching the game, and Josh Booty was pitching for Evangel, and there was a play at the plate, and they overthrew the catcher, and Josh Booty was the backup to the catcher. He was backing up the throw, right? Good fundamental baseball. good fundamental baseball. Right, and it comes off of the back wall, and Booty catches it perfect. Like he catches, like the walls behind him, like an outfielder he, almost. Yeah, and he, he kind of like scoops it up, and there's a the guy is running to second, and Booty crow hops and throws the ball, aim to second base, and throws it over the fence. Jeez. In center field, he crow hop, and the ball standing behind, like just rose up, dude, and it was like it was hit. Off of the bat, because I mean, like he let out a, a grunt when he threw the ball. You well, know that, what I mean? I like, mean, it, as impressive as that is, he missed by a wide oh, it, margin. It, but it was like it oh, was, it was just like, like the ball kind of like sailed yeah. up, right? Like it was like almost like it was flying. I can like still see it as a kid, like as a like a young teenager being like it stopped you in your tracks, right? And it stopped every, it stopped the whole park. Like everybody was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. It, you know, it was like a, you know, like a ground rule. Like, it, yeah, like what, were, what's the rule yeah, of that? I mean, it was just, but it was it's Happy Gilmore hitting one the golf ball. of the freakiest <laughs> arm strength things you've ever seen in person. It was just like, oh my god! I mean, and then I remember like my dad being like, "That's what the number one pick in the draft looks like." You yeah, know what I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. He's never going to play football at LSU because he right. was he was going to play. I mean, he was he was going to play. Um, Football and he could have gone anywhere, but then once he flamed out in the minor leagues, he came back to LSU and played quarterback. And he was. I do remember that story. He was com- he was competing against Rohan. And so, where is he now? Does anyone know? Uh, yeah, he's um, he's got a great Instagram. I mean, he travels all, all over the over place. the place. But is he doing anything sports? He related? was at David Ortiz's. I feel like people Hall of love Fame him. Induction on Saturday night. I saw. He was like interviewed on the red carpet. Really? For the Hall of Fame induction. And then I want to say at the beginning of the summer, they put together an international football team. They put together a U.S. team to go play international football like over in like Norway or somewhere. And Josh Booty was the quarterback. What? He's at Pebble Beach right now. (laughs) Which summer? Like either the beginning of this summer this summer or last summer. I mean, what? he was. He was. He still has. How old is he? I mean, he's what, forty something? I can tell um, you right now. He has he's, to be. He's, he's forty-seven. He's, Pey- he's Peyton Manning's age. Oh my god. He's forty-seven years old. He still had. He had a trial with the Oakland wow. Raiders in two thousand seven. Like he was doing what? He had a trial with the Oakland Raiders in two thousand seven. Really? Like, wow. Yes. Like they. Once you have that number one pick kind of smoke around you, sure. people don't want to like really give and up. I mean, like you know, like like the highlight. I mean, like he had a cannon. He's for got an some arm. stories. We should get um, him on. Would he's he good. Come? He's yeah. He's good to come on. Um, Rohan should really have him. He on. should. That would mm. be amazing. I mean, remember when Brandon <laughs> Wine he was telling the <laughs> yeah, story? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, booty bump and cooked. Like, yeah. hey, booty already. Knew. Yeah, they must have already told Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna touch you. He's like, yeah, that's right. I'm gonna be on the bench. <laughs> Ain't playing. That would be great. Put be Wine in the fucking game, bro. <laughs> uh, and then he had a brother. Like they, their their family. Is like stacked the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, I mean, like they just like create these athletes. Abram, his brother, was a standout wide receiver. He played with Kevin Falk at LSU. Okay, and then they've had like a line of quarterbacks. His younger brother, John David Booty, played at USC. John David was the it was the quarterback after Matt Leinart. Really, at USC. And then I think Abram's son's name is General. It is He's the one that's just uh, got to that. Oklahoma. General Booty. General Booty. Is that's amazing. Name. Uh, and he just committed to Alabama. He just committed to Oklahoma. Really? Uh, is, is he Evangel's quarterback? I think. Do he they might still be all at, go to Evangel? I think he might be at Oklahoma already. Oh, really? Because yeah. I want to say for a minute there, the booties were all up in like Calvary Baptist. Well, someone says his dad played for Mississippi State. Who? Josh Josh's? Booty's dad. Oh, I don't, I don't know that. I didn't either. 
Um, yeah, he was at Tyler Juco in Texas. Wow. And then committed to Oklahoma wow. in May. God, I bet he's got a lot of good stories. Uh, Josh or General? Josh. Well, either. Oh, any General has seen some stuff. Yeah. Uh, I know what cool is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving is awesome. Yeah, right. I've seen <laughs> the sixth ring of cool. Yes. Uh, all right, remember daily, we are brought to you by Cajun Ready Mix Concrete online at CajunRMC.com. Get in touch with our friends at Cajun Ready Mix Concrete, where they can help you out with uh, any size project. No project too big, too small for our, pins, our friends over at Cajun Ready Mix Concrete. Uh, online, CajunRMC.com. They can hand, uh, help you out with uh, anything that you need from a residential, industrial, municipal project. Online, CajunRMC.com. CajunRMC.com. Dot com is where you can find them online. We will talk uh, to um, Richard, uh, excuse me, John Perkins uh, Jr. John Perkins Jr. coming up here at uh, eight thirty this morning. He is the writer and director for a movie that is coming down to South Louisiana, centered around Mike the Tiger. It's going to be centered around the mascot. Uh, not the live mascot. Uh, or I guess it would be the live mascot, just not the real tiger. Um, yeah, he's a human being. <laughs> inside yeah, there. right. I mean, he's still alive, uh, <laughs> but he's not. He's not the one. Yeah, right. He's not a, uh, he's not a meat-eating well, killer. Well, well, he might be. Yeah, he might be. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah. Not, he's not covered I'm sorry in for boxing this guy in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or put him in the costume. I, like I said last night, I had no idea uh, that one of the student mics uh was is like 610 one of the perpetrators yeah you said that that's yeah, crazy it's crazy bro i mean i could, just couldn't get like you have to get a suit specially made they had right? to then wouldn't i mean it's fit. almost like almost the reason not to pick him but like oh we gotta yeah, know i mean you gotta right. really be three, get some effort expense. out there yes I know, but that's intimidating that's a good mascot height think about it Walking around like well, that. Well, no, because they got it. Well, they got especially at a basketball they game. They got to carry yeah. him up the. You got to go up the student section at six ten. He might tip over. He might. They've got Mike. Oh, Mike, awful close to the top to the top <laughs> rope up there. Oh, well, I'm sure at some point, like they can't see. It's like, oh my god, all right, put me down, put me down. I can smell it here, but I can't <laughs> see anything. It's steep up here. Yeah. Um, Y'all are crazy. That's so yeah, scary. Right. That would. It'd be awesome. Oh my gosh. If there's a way to go out, that would not be the worst. No. What, falling off That's the true. top of Yeah, if, if you were in Mike the Tiger's costume and they <laughs> literally carried you off the stadium and just whoop, and my you're dad, gone. Whoops. Yeah, but you off. would be a legend. Yeah. My dad had a friend that fell off the top of Tiger Stadium when they were here for a game. And he's what? Okay. When he was at Ole Miss, so it was Ole Miss LSU. So this was in the 60s, and he fell off. And, like, they didn't know where he was. Like, nobody could find it. Like, they went, they left that night. Whoop. And were like, he must have gone home with somebody, like, didn't know where he was. And he was down. He didn't die. Whoa. He survived. Whoa. Someone found him, but they just lost their friend, didn't know where ah. he was. Like, found him, like, after the game? Yes. Ah. Drunk. Was it, he was very yes. drunk. No, that's, uh, why so, I don't know. that's why he's still alive. That's why he survived. Sees, like how high up that went. Like yeah. I mean, it was high. It was a from survivor. the top, but I don't know like the height. I think of it was just like a flat bowl then. in the yeah. '60s. You know, it wasn't. Yeah. Didn't have the. Right. the, the I the think it's still high beads. enough to die. Yeah, it's high enough to be very <laughs> yeah. scary. Yeah, I mean, he was hurt, but he didn't die. Yeah, I mean, he could have fallen into a tree. He could have fallen into. He you fell know into the bushes. Nobody knew where he was. Oh my god! Ugh. Isn't that crazy? I wonder how long. Can we get him on the show? I know, right? That would be amazing. Could you imagine that fall? You're like. Well, I mean, I'm good. Yeah, right. I, I mean, that'll be, a, that'll be a Quincy Wiggins moment. You yeah. know what I mean, when he's like right. 35, 40, he's going to look back and be like, I got hit by a car. <laughs> know, right? You know what I mean? Like, like hit I by got a like car. drilled by a car yeah. that threw me into the air and somersaulted my six God. foot eight ass. It's somebody, you know what I mean? There's like, a video of it somewhere. I mean, it is crazy video to see. Yeah. I think it's scrubbed, huh? I, mean, I think it's gone. Someone I mean, for, for the U.S. Army's it. sake, it yeah. should be. Yeah, it's a super I mean, soldier. It's just a liability. <laughs> yeah. Someone I mean. has it. Super I mean, Jamar soldier. Kane was telling the story where, like, one of the guys that he had committed to Oklahoma at the time, um, might have been like Marvin Jones Jr., I forget who it was, is texting Kane at, from the game being like, check this out. Like, check this crazy dude out. And Kane's like, if you get on another scooter this weekend, I'm, I'm pulling your scholarship. <laughs> you know, like, nobody gets on another scooter. No he's scooters like, for anybody. Come to find out it was Quincy. <laughs> but coach like, the he, kid. He's like, I show up, and he was like, coach, that's the kid that flew off the scooter at the Army All-American game. He was like, say what? <laughs> that kid? I mean, it's crazy. It, it, that video. And Quincy's going to be like, at some point, going to be like, holy shit. Right. Because it feels like he I mean, definitely yeah. didn't realize it after it no happened. Way. And, and he probably still hasn't thought about moment, it since it happened. I mean, he still feels invincible. Yeah. You know what I mean, we've all been wow. that age. And, and I mean, I was that age at 
I mean, 5'8", 155 pounds. I can't imagine being 6'8", 235. Yeah. Right. I mean, like... Breaking backboards. Getting hit by cars and just popping right back up and getting on the scooter. Jeez. And asking the coach if I can play in the game. Wait yeah. up. That's the best part. <laughs> yeah, he's like, the coach was like, he didn't understand why I wasn't letting him play. He's like, Quincy, you broke your arm, man. <laughs> you got a broken wrist. And just, let's just take a beat here, Quincy. Let's just get you, let's get our thoughts together. <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll be right back with more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, here live on this Wednesday. Make sure to hit that like button, share button, comment button. We'll be right back. So I guess we didn't do the voice. Do you suffer from chronic dehydration? Are you looking to improve your athletic performance and you need to get over and see our friends over at GoFlow IV? They're located on Jefferson Highway. Easy to find them online at geauxflowiv.com. Make sure and use the promo code Jordy Collada Show. If you do, they'll take 15% off of your initial visit. Check them out online, geauxflowiv.com. Um, I was I was excited to come to uh, a top level program. I've been at a lot of great places. Um, been very fortunate in my career, but to really say that um, you have an opportunity every year, uh, once obviously once we get it rolling to win a national championship, um, there's not very many places that you can say that. So for him to offer me the opportunity to come with him to LSU um, was nothing but but you know humility and, and gratitude. Some Sunday players um, mm -hmm. in that room. But again, you know, it's 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 got to be the total package, the total process um, of of, of buy-in, of understanding what we're trying to get done, um, of figuring out how we want it to get done, but also allowing those guys to be able to play with instincts. Um, for example, I, I think Jay Ward is long yeah. and athletic. He's he's very versatile. He's played corner, played nickel, played safety. Um, very excited about you know Joe Fouché, um, one of the transfer guys that we came in um, because he has a, a dimension of physicality. Um, Major Burns. You know, fortunate enough that he, he was able to come back home. You know, again, he's long, he's athletic. So he gives you flexibility between both field and boundary safeties. Um, and then you've got some guys that you can throw in, like uh, Brooks, um, mm -hmm. Sage, yeah. um, Derek Davis. Um, Todd Harris is a guy that's been around for a while. So I think that we have enough in that room to be successful. Um, but, again, you still want to continue to, to grow and be able to push each point. Yeah, well, I, I think it starts here, you know, and we have a good bit of people on this particular staff who are from Louisiana uh, who know and believe in our hearts that this place produces the best football players in the country, you know, and I think the numbers speak for themselves per capita, produce the most NFL players, you know what I mean? So even from an analytical standpoint, it makes sense to take the kids from here because the chances of them playing the league are higher than if they come from anywhere else. Yeah. Um, I think our brand is super powerful, so we will have to recruit at a national level or there's really no reason that we, we shouldn't, you know what I mean? Because if we can get a top player from another state who can help us win a championship, then of course, right? But um, I think it starts right here in Louisiana and then right here in Baton Rouge. You know, mm -hmm. there's some really good players who are still available that are right here in Baton Rouge. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. And visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. We've seen the BK Takeover stuff <laughs> from, from LSU yeah. and, and social media. And um, really in his short time in Baton Rouge, there's been a lot of people embracing his Mm -hmm. His approach to to building this roster. What's it like to recruit alongside him? Oh, it's been it's been great. Coach has been awesome to me because he lets me you know lets me be myself when it comes to recruiting. When it comes to, to coaching, he lets his coaches coach. Lets his coaches recruit. 
So I have no complaints on that on that end. And when I need him to get in touch with a kid, he's there for me. Um, the communication line has been has been great. He's just been nothing but supportive. But this opportunity was different. Um, you have a chance to come to a place with unbelievable tradition, uh, work for the winningest head coach in college football. Um, just be at a state. I've never been at a state where yeah. football's king. I, you know, and it, it, if you just dominate your state, you're going to get some of the best players that there are. Sure. Yeah, so I think uh... – you know, getting through spring, I mean, most of it was obviously just installing the offense. Um, and I, I think all four guys uh, really made some strides in terms of that and, and showed a lot of positives. Um, obviously, which, you know, I mean, you guys get to talk about all the time. So you guys, you <laughs> sure. know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the, all four have, have done a great job. They did, I, I think they really did a really nice job in spring of taking strides forward uh, individually. And, everybody, and everybody's different in terms of what they need to get better at and, and what they need to show. Um, and then move it into summer. And, and I love the way they're working right now in the weight room for Coach Flint. Um, but like I said, I think, I think spring a lot was, it was everything was new for everybody. So that, especially at the beginning, there wasn't as much evaluation, say the first few days, um, get into the flow. And then I think uh, we got some good opportunities for some guy to get, guys to get some reps. And I think everybody showed some positives. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Yeah, you know, it's kind of weird in a perverse way, Jordy. You know me well. Is that I, I kind of relish in change, and I do like it. I'm one of the few people that, that embraces it, and we're very lucky at LSU to have it, uh, uh, to be where we are and to be able to do that. I mean, I can't say that for everyone in the business because it is uh, unsettling uh, in, in a lot of ways. But for us, you know, Change is a good thing, and I think um, I think we're going to be the beneficiary of it. And it's not gonna it's not gonna stop. It's just going to keep on going. Yeah. And I'd be lying to you if I told you I had a crystal ball and can tell you what was going on and what's going to happen. But you know, it's it's we're going to be here and we're going to embrace it and we're going to uh, take uh, advantage of it uh, the best we can. We're going to do it right. You know, the Tiger Athletic Foundation and and. Uh, in, in partnership, obviously, hand in hand with what we do, uh, funded a, a master plan study because I wanted to see, hey, what what we needed, and I, I just didn't want my opinion. I've been a sure. few places, and I have a good one, I think. But you just want to see how and what our needs are, and so we're in that process of looking at it. And obviously, the PMAC is is. Uh, 50 years old this year and uh, yeah. and probably needs some updating. Uh, it's, it's got good bones and maybe we can see what we can do with that. Uh, same thing with all that, uh, you know, property that we have both down Nicholson and where we are currently on Nicholson and North Stadium. Is that, hey, is this the proper use and best use for that? Mm -hmm. And hand in hand with the university and, and what we do with TAF, uh, we'll make those decisions and we'll be prudent and, and thinking about what and how we do it. But I ended up at a lunch yesterday with three suits from WAFB. Hmm. Um, in the Jays? In the Jays, in the hat, <laughs> in the T-shirt. Uh, I thought I was going to meet one suit, and uh, we actually showed up to the same restaurant that two other suits were eating at. We all conjoined table uh, and, uh, and had a, uh, just had a, an executive lunch with everybody from WAFB. A lot of good return on the show mm -hmm. uh, early on. A lot of good feedback. They think we ought to, they think we ought to start fining for cursing in the first hour. Fining who? Uh, fining for whoever does it. Like they, fining each other? Yeah. We, like they, we're they, gonna they, have a swear jar? A swear jar. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's tough. 
7 a.m. Okay. Between the 7 and 8 a.m. hour. It's Lloyd that, that was having That's exactly what they said. So. That's exactly what they said. The suit said. He said, you know, I mean, Lloyd <laughs> pushes the envelope on the cussing thing we've talked about. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, hey, how's the show? We're all kind of like passing the bread. You know what I mean? Like early. Like I'm just trying to like fit in at this at this table. Uh, and uh, they're like, oh, yeah, the show's good. The show's good. Uh, what's the guy in the in the in, in, on the couch? What's is, the Lloyd? Mullet, is it Lloyd? Guy. Yeah, Lloyd. What, what about him? He sure does push the line on the cussing thing, doesn't he? <laughs> Which, by the way, there's no rules to our contract right. at WAFB that states that you know, like we can't cuss at a certain time, or you know, we've got to change the show at any point. There's been no discussions of changing anything that we do from. W All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Make sure and check out our interview with Cortez Hankin from earlier. All of our stuff brought back to you by RMB Builders, Rhett Bourgeois and his crew. Get in touch with them today if you want a custom design home, if you need any help around the office. They've got commercial uh, licenses as well, so they can help you out uh, in corporate America if you need it. Uh, anything done around the office, uh, but RMB Builders, online rmb-builders.com is where you can check out uh, all of the scope of work of what they've done. they got a portfolio of places that they've uh, built and refurbished and brought back to life, and if they need to do that to your place, get in touch with them today online, rmb-builders.com. Last night was cool, man. We were over at Walk-On's uh, in with a bunch of local people. David Fleshman, local lawyer, former LSU basketball player was there, Tyrus Thomas, former lottery pick and standout, Baton Rouge native, uh, was there from McKinley High School uh, last night. And we were all in a room listening uh, to the newest project that has uh, come up here on LSU's campus, which a lot of people are excited about. And it is a, uh, a major motion picture, a, uh, a big film called The Mascot, uh, which John Perkins Jr. is the, uh, the writer and the director. He was there last night explaining the project. He's an Athens native. Uh, and it is really cool to catch up with him. It was cool to meet him last night. He's in our studio now, uh, here on this uh, on this Wednesday morning. Uh, John, I know you go you go by Perk. Well, uh, I'll say my John Perkins Jr. is my dad. Oh, I'm the third. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's MP3. all good. Sorry. Yeah. Trip. JMP3. Yeah. Um, yeah, they called me Matthew because it was Johnny was my grandfather, John was my dad, and I was Matthew. But I go by Perk. So. Nice, <laughs> Perk. Welcome to the uh, to the studio. Thanks Last for night was me, awesome, man. man. Yeah, and it was it was a cool story to see how this project has kind of gotten to this point. Uh, but if you can, explain to our audience on on how you sit here today with this project kind of sitting where it is. Yeah, no, um, I was uh, I was a mascot in college um, at UGA. You guys don't hold that against me. <laughs> um, no, I uh, I was mascot there from 2002 to 2005 and um, actually played you guys in 03. That That's was right. my first time to Baton Rouge. Wow. And it was like entering a different world yeah, yeah. <laughs> um that and, might be the best day game experience ever. for an lsu fan ever yeah I mean, if you ask an lsu fan like what was that moment in 03 where you felt like you were for real and that was when was that david green and yeah all mm -hmm. those guys that yep. came in david pollock yep came in here that saturday and uh and lsu played as i mean good it came down played. to the wire it did it did matt malk hit uh, skylar green that was, yep. that was an incredible game and then you guys broke the t the, the, the long screen it was that's as good a game as LSU's ever produced during the day. For sure. No, well, it was as it was the most intimidating experience <laughs> I had ever had as a mascot <laughs> walking into Tiger Stadium, seeing a tiger in a cage on the stage, right. on the sidelines, being like, Whoa, man, this is <laughs> this is loud. Um, and then we played you guys again later in the SEC championship. Yeah. And uh, confession, in the third quarter, I went in for a water break, and I don't think I ever came back yeah. out on the field. <laughs> the game was over this um, quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, no, I mean, that championship run was, was yeah. incredible. Yeah. And uh, same thing in 2019, too, like sure. watching, watching you guys. Um, everyone was jealous of, of what was happening. And, right. um, but now it's fun to, like, be on the other side and, mm -hmm. you know, retroactively take pride and all that. So... For me, um, yeah, I, I went to UGA. Um, I actually created my own major in film production and apprenticed under a filmmaker who was a professor there at the time. 
uh, graduated and the film industry didn't exist in Georgia at the time. So I moved to New York City and lived and worked there for 12 years. Um, made my first feature film in the city, uh, an indie called The Little Tin Man. Um, it did the festival run, you know, won a few awards, got a good review in the New York Times, kind of like accomplished everything yeah. that like a micro budget movie can. Right. Um, and then after that, uh, launched my own production company and started doing a lot of storytelling for brands and nonprofits and whatnot. But always had this passion project that I really wanted to do, um, which was an intersection of, of my two passions, which is college football and filmmaking. And so I had written this script about, you know, based on a lot of my personal experience as a mascot. And uh, initially, you know, went to UGA and, and pitched them on it. And, um, you know, unfortunately, there was a little too much red and black tape and we couldn't figure it out. Um, but I had the opportunity to come to come talk to LSU about it. And it was it was very clear, very fast that they were into the idea and wanted to support me in the way that that I'd always dreamed about telling this story. So I was telling our audience this morning just briefly about our conversations last night and meeting you and some of the things that stood out about just kind of talking to you um, last night was that you mentioning how prepared LSU was for this conversation, not knowing the project that yeah. they were breaking down, but just how prepared they were for the film industry to approach them with an opportunity. For sure. I mean, Louisiana was always kind of first wave of like states that were doing the tax credit and really trying to attract the film industry to come. And LSU was on top of that. And, you know, they have a film liaison that um, was the, the first person that we chatted with. Ashley Terrato, shout out to her. Um, and she really did a great job like getting all the decision makers to the table. Um, and we had a meeting at Tiger Stadium in one of the war rooms. Wow. And you know, I'm going around chatting with everybody about the details of the project and they were just all in, man. Yeah. And it felt like National Signing Day. I'm just <laughs> like there. And you know, as soon as the ink hit the paper, I was all in. I, I left that meeting, walked across the street to the gift shop, bought a hat, and really yeah. kind of haven't <laughs> taken it off since. <laughs> nice. um, you know, and nice. it's it's that cool thing about like, I mean, equate it to signing day too. It's like you you're all in, and your family's all in, and everybody's like LSU fans now. Yeah. Um, and for me, back to John Perkins Jr. Um, he actually passed away last fall, um, right after this happened. And man, I don't know that I've ever seen a bigger LSU fan than John Perkins Jr. Wow. Um, right after this happened. Wow. So this movie's dedicated to him. There's a lot riding on it for me hmm. um, from a personal standpoint, um, wanting to make him proud. And so, yeah. Sorry for your loss. Congratulations for your Thanks, opportunity. Man. Thanks, man. Yeah. No, I, I got a new family here now. Yeah. And, um, and it's been such a blessing to like, be a part of this and I, I don't think I understood what Southern hospitality was yeah. <laughs> until I got here you know and it better some, to do that to you quick yeah I mean there's something in the water in the crawfish etouffee <laughs> that, keep, that keeps me coming back yeah, so. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell me how a movie is made and then what part of the process are you in in, yeah. in developing this film um, so this one's kind of a unique um, proposition there's been a few projects that have done something similar, but I'm looking to marry the scripted with the real world. You know, it's like you can't recreate the electricity of Saturday night in Death Valley. Yeah. That's that's impossible to do. So we actually kind of beta tested this um, last season, brought a skeleton crew, a couple guys, cameras, and they gave us you know, all access passes to to, uh, to the Florida game last oh, year, wow. which was a good one. Wow. Um, and we went around and were collecting footage and, and following Mike, you know, the whole game. Um, and so now we have a hard drive full of stuff, but it's like, you know, to, to recreate that is impossible. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, the plan right now is to, to shoot this fall. Um, we got a lot of the pieces in place. Uh, we're talking to cast right now, trying to get the right people. Really want this to be a commercially viable project, which means getting some faces and names um, to be a part of it. So putting out offers to folks right now for that. Um, and then, 
yeah, we're, we're, you'll see us on the sidelines uh, some this fall as well. So you'll be using some of that footage, I'd imagine, like, you're not just getting ideas for what the film should look like, like, this is going to be in the movie, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's be... What, that's part of what I think, we were kind of talking about it before you got here, but what makes LSU, like, in the brand, like, they're usually very accessible. Like, they, they also like opportunities like this, so it seems like a perfect kind of match for what you're trying to do. For sure, for sure. And then, I mean, the NIL component is another interesting thing about this project too because even when we started talking about it um the laws hadn't fully changed the way they are now to where we we can have that conversation um but i mean it's an organic opportunity maybe in the truest form Absolutely. possible of name image likeness yeah you know to to give that opportunity to some student athletes. get the credits yeah exactly get your first imdb hey, there you go listing, yeah. actor you know? yeah. so um and you know not everybody goes on to play professionally right so um i was talking with michael papajohn last night yeah. you know yeah. that's a dude that was an lsu athlete that Absolutely. has built a career on made his name on everybody's all americans for sure film. i think that's where he got Cut his start. teeth on yeah. that one that was his first one yeah mm -hmm. they they were looking for athletes he said at the time you had to be a senior or something like that mm -hmm. i don't know the rules were a little different back then but um but yeah, so more opportunities for that and uh, and looking forward to collaborating on that front. And, and there's actually experience of this because I remember being a young child in Tiger Stadium. I believe it was the Tulane game yeah. where LSU was playing Tulane and at halftime they shot they, they shot the scenes for everybody's All-American. Yep. And cuz they cuz of the same thing that you're saying, you could not recreate a Tiger Stadium atmosphere crowd and I mean, it, you could, but it's not authentic, people, Yeah, right? people are going to know. Yeah, Especially, there's a smell test there, you absolutely. know? Absolutely. Like, so, um, but, I mean, if we can transplant just a small portion of that electricity to a Friday night in the multiplex, cineplex, whatever, man, sure. that's, that's lightning in a bottle. Um, you mentioned last night, and I know it was a, it's a huge deal, and just talking to a couple of people that were there last night, of, of the backing that you have for this project. Um, yeah. Can you explain the, the, the agency or... or yeah, so we're we're working with um, William Morris Endeavor, yes. which is one of the largest talent agencies in the world. Um, they rep a lot of big names that you've heard of, but um, there's an agent there who is a former college quarterback who just latched on to this man, got it immediately, and has become a champion to to moving it forward. And you know, they were excited about. LSU being a part of it, you know, again, that 2019 run was undeniable sure. for the entire country. Everybody looked at that and saw how the, how the fans respond to that, the passion and all that. And it's like, man, that's the, that's the people you want to make a movie for that are going to like really enjoy it and support it and come all out, you know? Yeah. So, so um, tell a little bit of the story about, uh, what, yeah. What, what's... So, um, so the movie opens in the Superdome at a high school state championship game and we're following a blue chip quarterback named Nick Shepard who has a scholarship offer to LSU and Nick's on the verge of of getting a personal record and so he makes kind of a selfish decision and causes the team to lose the game and after that his life and identity start coming unraveled from there so he gets in a fight <laughs> with a fan <laughs> gets arrested <laughs> And LSU pulls the scholarship to so like character liability. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, his cheerleader girlfriend breaks up. Oh, no, it's you all know, coming undone. Kind of hits rock bottom in what a high school sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's trying to figure out how he's going to reinvent himself. And he shows up to the uh, LSU cheerleading tryouts, where his now ex girlfriend is wow. trying out. And you Sabotage. know, stage five clinger. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Fi finds uh, finds out that the mascot audition is simultaneously going on, and sees this as an opportunity to you know maybe stay close to her, try to win her back, and then also there's a scholarship, so maybe buy himself a year to like try to walk on the team again. Mm -hmm. um, so impulsively tries out for it, gets it, and then gets thrust into this bizarre subculture that he didn't know existed where he's forced to go to mascot camp, which is a real thing. Really? Um, and then the movie culminates at the national mascot competition, which is also a real thing. Um, 
But I tell people, you know, the story is really a parable about identity, right? Like we all wear masks metaphorically, particularly in that transition from high school to college, one of the most formative moments in anyone's life. And this guy just has to put on like a giant tiger costume to figure out who he really is, you know? So a lot of heart woven into it, a lot of fun. You know, when they go to mascot camp, it's full on is like, it like band camp. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fight club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, no, it's a, uh, it's a lot of like, idiosyncrasies and you know learning the nuances of your character and kind of the over top over the top portion of it um but then you know this is also there's a there's a canon of sports movies right yeah they're like there's a certain reverence for that 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 we need to pay attention to um if we want this to be like a timeless thing you know that 10 years from now lsu kids are still watching this in their dorm room sure you know? Um, and then there's also the family friendly aspect of it. Like you can't actually make a movie about Mike the Tiger and not have 10 year old kids be able to watch it. Right. He yeah. needs to be as accessible to the kids as he is to the frat boy, as he is to the 70 year old alumni that has a lot of nostalgia tied up into this, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm approaching this like very delicately. I know I'm walking into like hallowed ground. And, you know, people get tattoos on their body with this brand. <laughs> people engrave it on their headstone. Like, this is, this is important stuff. And I'm, I'm very cognizant of that in this process. So You mentioned casting. And I know that you are, you're, you're kind of shooting for the moon here. Um, yeah. You can't, I don't know if you can mention names, but, I mean, where, where are you in that process? Um, yeah, we have, have some offers out to, to some folks you've heard of. Um, I'll, I might have to come back on the show later. To, to <laughs> right. Speaking of signing some announcements, day, this yeah. is a lot like recruiting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. exactly. Right. Uh, what, what's a timeline on something like that? When, when would you like to have this thing fully cast and into production? Yeah. So, like I said, it's sort of two parts. We're doing marrying the the scripted to the the real world stuff. This fall, we'll definitely be capturing that. Um, you know, if everything comes together with the cast and all the all the pieces. Um, we'll probably be doing principal photography either this fall or in the spring. Um, again, I'm not in a rush because it's like this thing's going to live forever. So just get it right the first time. Absolutely. You know, so. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, no. I, Is there a place where audience can keep up with the show whether it be social media website where where can they find more information yeah we we have uh it's kind of an not a lot of traffic on it right now but the mascotfilm.com um is where we're gonna pump out a lot of info so if you want to add that to your Absolutely. bookmarks or whatever Absolutely. <laughs> uh the mascotfilm.com check it out if you want more information for a uh, major motion picture project that's coming down to south louisiana which will feature uh an lsu football flavor and really all kind of centered around Mike the Tiger, and uh, it's called The Mascot. So go check it out. Um, Perk, I appreciate you having me out last night, man. Yeah, of course, man. Um, as we talked a lot last night, I mean, you are striving for the authentic local flavor of this. And, That's right. Uh, however we can help, we are uh, want to be a resource for you. When how, how do you – do you move here? Do you move to Baton Rouge for uh, – For a period of time. Um, my family's in Athens right now, mm -hmm. but uh, – but you never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but I mean, to make the movie, you have to. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely be here. Yeah. So, so Georgia I mean, would have made this a little, a much easier on you had they said well, yes. Well, I mean, you're you here. know, selfishly, it yeah. was just like roll out of bed and go yeah. do it, you yeah. know. But, yeah. um, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it the way it's turning out. You know, it's like. God bless the broken road that led me straight to Baton Rouge. There you go. <laughs> and, and look, you can tell the LSU f officials were, were pretty fast to jump on the opportunity i mean they, i mean they didn't it yeah. really didn't take long what was it, like six weeks start to finish six weeks yep and again that's that's all you know shout out to ashley and brian hommel and dave mm -hmm. haskin for uh for putting it together that fast and mm -hmm. and assembling all the decision makers at once to, to and there will be other mascots available on this stuff yeah yeah so you know um mike is obviously featured um but when we go to mascot camp it fans out to the sec um so we're talking to 
to some other schools about participating in that. And then probably won't see Georgia in it. <laughs> you know, I, I got nothing but love for UGA um, alma mater. It's they're great. And you know, if the, Georgia, if you're listening, you might be getting another call from me soon, but um <laughs> Let the but, man in, for God's sake. Yes. <laughs> no, Harry still Dog. has the outfit. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, but yeah, uh, more more to come on those announcements with the other schools. Um, but yeah, the the mascot finals um, nationals uh, will it'll fan out and we'll have like schools from all over the country, like a Capital One commercial. Nice. Well, it's funny you bring that up. I was actually in those commercials uh, back in the day. I did what? it for two seasons. Really? Yeah. So that that was actually kind of an impetus for this idea because I was there as a 19 year old kid, being like, "Man, how'd they get all these mascots here? This is like kind of cool, right?" So um, when I started digging in on it and you know creating the script, it was like, "No, there's an opportunity here to to." leverage these fan bases right like these are people that are super passionate i mean it's kind of a stealing a page out of the marvel playbook it's yeah. like you know how do you take something that people already love and and create a story around that you yeah. know so um but yeah no i love doing the capital one stuff that first year it was like kenny main right was, was hosting massive. it and yeah. stuff and uh, we were like playing, you know, beach football because Kenny was a quarterback, mm -hmm. and that was that was a lot of fun. So you were on a scholarship at Georgia to be the mascot. I was like a full ride. Um, it was it was a partial scholarship. So in in Georgia they have Hope Scholarship, which uh -huh. is like if you make a certain grade yeah. average that it's like covers tops here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, so I didn't really need as much, but but it covered a lot of stuff. Kind of made up the difference, which was awesome. Wow. Uh, I couldn't get over the Mike, the mascot that was there last night representing the brand is like six <laughs> ten. I, mean, I, I, I know. Over I, I mean, thought, like yeah, said, is there not like a standard, standard like, mascot? Eye to eye with Thomas. I know. Thomas. Seriously, yeah. No, Coach McMahon, you need to like uh, <laughs> suit him up here. Yeah, I mean, it was it's nuts, man. Um, but how I get they're like the main character of the film, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean Mike is uh, Mike is the one that is going to get the most face time so mm -hmm. um but it's fun too there's like shots kind of woven in. i don't know if you guys have seen remember iron man you know it's oh. like the shot where it goes inside of the mask oh, and you yeah, see his face cool. hear breathing yeah so yeah. i'm gonna borrow that shot a few times where it's like you know in the middle of the action we pop in and see how he's really feeling or gotta that he's him. doused with sweat you, you know? gotta get so. him going up the stadium yeah exactly oh yeah during the crowd surfing yeah yeah, yeah. it's like whoa don't touch there <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. or do yeah so watch behind me yeah God exactly sakes. uh perk i appreciate it man thanks will, so much uh, we'll be in touch man we'll do this a lot more in the lead up yeah would love love to come back man. absolutely Thank you. the mascot movie uh the mascot film.com is where you can find it online check out with uh with what's going on uh with perk and the crew is uh, it'll be cool to see south louisiana lsu tiger stadium and mike featured in a uh, major, uh, major motion picture film uh, coming, to, uh, coming to Baton Rouge and to Louisiana. So uh, as, the, uh, as, the, as the information comes out on it, we'll be giving it to you right here on the Jordy Collada Show. Appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, make sure you have a good rest of your day. Mikey Matuk and Mike Dup coming up this afternoon. Make sure you're tuned in, subscribed, all uh, ready to go for that at 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, 6 to 8 o'clock right here, a part of FM Digital Media's uh, coverage here in podcasting uh, mic'd up this afternoon make sure and hit a like and share button comment here on this uh, and we'll be back with you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. for everybody here and our friends over at Go Chevrolet who drive us uh, have a great Wednesday Go Tigers Go Tigers you're getting it <laughs> <laughs>